So we're gonna get started installing the micro blue on this Mitsubishi floor mount unit. What we have to do is we've got to get rid of these couple plastic pieces. So we're gonna take off this front cover, then we'll take off the rest of this plastic, which will expose the electrical we need to get to to get to installing the pump. We'll first take off this cover. Now to get ahead, I already removed these couple screws that were in here. Um, those screws are just kind of holding this entire piece of plastic on, two screws. And now this plastic piece has been removed as well. This covers. And now we've got our electrical exposed. I'll flip the unit upright so we can see. But we're actually going to get started around the back of the unit so we can go ahead and kind of figure out where we want to get our pump set, install the plumbing, and then we'll route the electrical back up front and we'll get started installing it here. One other note is that I have already removed this panel that's removed with one Phillips head screw. So to get started with the plumbing, what we want to do is we want to adapt our reservoir to the drain line. We're going to provide you with a half inch ID coupling, which you'll notice here I've already trimmed down a little bit. I trim it down a little bit so we can get it as snug to the drain line as possible. You can trim it down more or you can trim it down less. Um, but what we're going to do is use this coupling that we provided to adapt to your drain tube. Please note, we do want to secure these connections to make them air and water tight. I'm going to get everything set in place, make sure the pump's going to be where we want it to be before we move forward to anything like that. Once you have the reservoir uh, fit where you want it to be, um, what you'll notice is that the black caps that were on the, this inlet and outlet here, I've actually gone ahead and moved those to the top. The only remaining outlet that's uncovered up here is going to be our vent tubing, and we'll install that momentarily. So this is our vent tubing. What we're gonna do here um, is we're gonna make sure that the reservoir is vented. Um, it just needs to be up so the other end of this tubing is higher than the drain pan. Um, at the moment, I don't have anything to strap it to. I'm gonna leave it here for the time being. Once you have the reservoir into place, then we wanna put the pump uh, back here as well. Um, keep in mind that these pumps do create suction. So for some reason, if you didn't want to mount it back here, you could mount it um, within anywhere within six feet of the unit because it does create suction and it's a self-priming unit. We're going to adapt it to the reservoir with quarter inch ID tubing. If you note from the beginning of the video, the quarter inch ID tubing is something that will have to be field supplied. Once you've got the pump fit in the back of the unit, um, what we can do is I've gone ahead and attached quarter inch ID tubing, just kind of mocking up, you know, the discharge side. Of course, this may come out this knockout here. You may chase it up. It's going to really depend on the install. But once you have the reservoir and pump fit back here where you want it, then we can look at installing the electrical. Um, what we're going to do is, of course, here's our power wire and we're going to snake this back across the unit. Um, there's a channel up here. Uh, put the wires through here and kind of pull them out the other side. We'll also be using our um, alarm connection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our alarm extension cable, um, which is part number C13192, um, and we're going to use it to extend our normally closed set of contacts. So we have a common here, which is a black wire, and normally closed is yellow. And once you've made that connection to extend your wires, then you can take both your alarm wire and your power wire and work on routing those back across the unit and up to the control panel. Now that you've got your electrical, wi electrical wires pulled through to the front of the unit, what we'll work on now is actually installing the electrical off of the control panel. What we're going to do is we're going to run S1 through my pump. So in this particular case, the S1 wire is black. So we're actually gonna wire nut that to both black wires on the pump. Um, this black wire is actually what we call RL1. That's gonna power the, uh, one of the legs of power for the pump. This other black wire from the pump is from the alarm side, that's your common. So what we wanna do again is we wanna run your S1 into both of these black wires on the pump. So when you have those three black wires put together, 
what you've done is you've brought your voltage in to the common of the pump and then the L1, which is one power leg of the pump. Then what we'll do is we'll take our yellow wire, which is normally closed, and we'll actually install that on the S1 terminal of the air handler. What that's going to do is that's going to be normally closed, so that's going to deliver your S1 power back to this S1 terminal in normal operation conditions. And then if we have an overflow, this normally closed contact will of course open, which will break power coming in to the air handler, but it'll keep the pump running to prevent the overflow. Our second leg of power is gonna install here on the S2 terminal. You'll notice that you're gonna have your S2 wire from your condenser also installed on this terminal. And lastly, what we'll do is we'll take this green wire and install it on this ground terminal right here. Finally, what you have is you have your S1 wire run through my pump. So your S1 is actually powering the pump here. So S1 from your condenser is wire nutted to both of these black wires. This black wire is your L1 from my pump. This other black wire is the common from the relay on the pump. Yellow is normally closed and that's going to go back to S1. So S1 from your condenser into both black wires, yellow normally closed back out to S1 of the air handler. S2 on the air handler has S2 from your condenser right here and it also has my L2, my white wire. That's gonna be where we're gonna get our second leg of power. S3 is your communication between your condenser and air handler. Again, this will be something that you do not alter, do not modify. We're not gonna be breaking anything on S3. Once you've got the plumbing done and you've got your electrical connections installed, if you put power to the pump, the pump should run continuously until you plug the reservoir in. And the reservoir will then go through a calibration mode uh, and then the pump will turn off and stand by until there's water in the reservoir. And we do that just by plugging in this eight pin coated plug, flat to flat, plugs right in together. Also wanna make sure that we have all of our connections are gonna be air and water tight. Um, what we wanna make sure is we have it clamped here. We also wanna make sure that it is clamped here on the suction side. Um, because we're creating vacuum, we wanna make sure that this, especially this connection is air and water tight because of course we're drawing a vacuum. I'm Jordan Wingar with Blue Diamond Pumps, and that was an install of a Micro Blue on a Mitsubishi M-Series floor-mounted unit.